What's going on, guys? Thanks very much for everyone that's joined. And you now. Chris, what's going on, buddy? You good? Man, I'm chilling, you know. I'm chilling. Ready to get that boy the blues. What's up with it? <laughs> no, we're good, mate. Literally, I think Johnny's just in the process of joining now. Here he is. Hey, Chris. How you doing, mate? What's up, Mum? What's happening? I'm good, I'm good. Gents, thanks very much for joining us. Um, obviously, we've got the heavyweights now that are in the scene. Christopher Lovejoy, Johnny Fisher, both from different sides of the pond. What's going on, gents? Where and how has this talk about come round for having this point? Chris can start. He's the one who's been calling uh, it on. Yeah, I start. Uh, basically, um, I know Sam Jones, uh, S Jam, and all that. And uh, he threw um, he threw his name out there. I'm like, let's get it. There's nothing to talk about. Let's get it. So, uh, is he available? I'm available. Let's get it. That's I'm available. I'm available. I'm very available. I'm very available, Chris. So whenever you want to come over here, as I said, I'll take you for a nice steak and our pie after the fight. But <laughs> listen, I'm ready I'm ready to go whenever you are. Yeah, yeah, we're ready. So basically, um, after my fight, I got suspended into the end of next month, which is the end of this month, June 29th. So I can't have a fight until the 1st of July. I believe the fight camp is uh, July 31st, that date. Yeah. And that's what, we, that, that's what we're doing. That's uh, it. I'm I'm coming to shut it down, man. You know, uh, no disrespect to them and all that, what they got going on, but uh, it's game time over here, man. So over time. with. I'm always ready. <laughs> whenever, you, whenever you're ready, come over, because I'm waiting. I'm training hard and I'm ready to go. <laughs> all right, we're going to see. We're going to see. Chris, have you had any contact with anybody from Matchroom or DAZN uh, in terms of an upcoming fight? No, not DAZN. Uh I messaged Eddie Hearn about it. Uh, he read it. He didn't hit me back yet. So, you know, I think today's his birthday or something like that. So, we're going to see, like I say, when, it's actually, when I talk to the matchmaker uh, and they get ready to put an actual fight together, because I think they got two different dates. They don't know which one they're going to put me on yet. And uh, when they figure out what date they're going to put Johnny on, I'm on my way. That's it. I'm going to come out there anyway, like, a, like, like, like 30 days before that fight anyway, just to stay out there. For a holiday. Yeah, I'm going to come out there anyway. Yeah. I'm going to hit all the gyms. <laughs> I'm gonna beat up all the heavyweights out there. I'm gonna hit all them gyms out there. So they've been they, they've been talking. I'm gonna beat all them little heavyweights up. So Johnny, in terms of this fight and potentially, well, uh, as we say, potentially this fight coming up, what what are your current thoughts on this fight? Is this a fight that you're happy to take tomorrow? Yeah, definitely. I, I trust my manager Sam Jones and Eddie Hearn. They've they've been talking about it. Eddie was talking about it on an IFL TV interview, and my manager put it towards me, Sam. And Listen, these are the sort of tests you're going to take in the heavyweight division. I'm, I'm ready to go. I've had two, I've had two fights already, and listen, it's a step up. I've got a big respect for Christopher. He's obviously built up a good record, and it'd be a good name to to fight in your third fight. So I'm ready to go. It's, it's a great test. And, and I suppose, Chris, you know where we are at the moment. You're both completely at different stages of your career, and I think that's a fair statement to make. You, you know, Johnny, you're 21. Chris, I think are you 37 now, or 37, yeah. So you're 37 now. So we're at this process. Who, who is this fight more dangerous for the individual to take? It's dangerous for him. Uh, he ain't never fought nobody like me. He got two fights. I mean, no disrespect. You know, he looked like he, he getting ready, but he ain't ready for me. You know, I just came off a, a world title shot. You know, I got 19, 20 pro fights. Uh, he ain't really been tested yet, man. You know, I'm going to shut that whole thing down. You know, they think they got an easy win. You know, I don't know if you saw my Instagram post, but I set this whole thing up. You know, I set it all up. You know, I patted my record just to get to this point right here. You know, and they probably looking at he was 306 pounds and I'm not in 300 pounds no more. You know, so they think they got an easy win, you know, and they're like, yeah, let's get him over here. He look nice record. And uh, <laughs> it's going to be like night and day when they see me, man. But Chris, Chris, there's one thing. You said it's an easy fight and it's going to be a hard fight for me. Every heavyweight fight is a hard fight and every heavyweight, heavyweight fight can end at any point. So we've both got to be ready. And I take every fight very, very seriously. So I'll be prepared for this one. Don't you better worry about take it that. serious. You better take it serious. I will. Don't worry about that, mate. <laughs> I'm trying it every day. Chris, what, what are your thoughts on what you've seen in Johnny? Uh, uh, and why do you think this is a fight that's so easy for you to take? Um, well, it's an easy fight for me to take because I fight anybody. I mean, it's only going to be probably like a six or eight round fight. Uh, he ain't really showed me nothing. You know, I mean, he looked good. You know, he got two wins against, you know, those people he fought look worse than people I fought. 
So, I mean, like I said, it's just, uh, I'm like old enough to be his father. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm a sonny. I'm a son him. <laughs> <laughs> what are your honest thoughts on Chris and what you've seen from him boxing? I, I, I'm sure, you know, there was a lot of people that tuned in last time when he was out against Manuel Char. Is there anything realistically you can take from that performance? Or, or did that show you anything that you actually thought, you know, the hype surrounding this man isn't real? Listen, I've seen I've seen little clips of, of Chris fighting and obviously to fight Manuel Charles who's fought the likes of Alexander Povetkin, he's been at the top of the game. So losing to Manuel Charles, no disgrace. Big respect to Chris Lovejoy for getting in there and fighting him. But I've not really seen any of his knockouts. I've not seen what he's like, but I've heard a few things and my trainer's happy with it, my manager's happy with it, and most importantly, I'm happy with it. And I'm ready to go whenever, as I said. So big respect to Chris, but he's going to have a bit of a shock when um, when he comes over to the United Kingdom. <laughs> How far away are we from getting this fight made? We're close. I mean, like I say, as soon as they figure out the fight date, uh, they'll send me over contract. I'm not even going to negotiate the number, uh, the price, the purse, whatever. They're probably going to offer me 10% of what I just fought for, which is not a problem. I'm not taking this fight for no money. I don't need the money. Uh, I'm going first class flights and everything. I'm going to pay spend probably half that on just me staying out there for a whole month. Uh, so this is just for my legacy. You know, this ain't about the money. You know, even though I'm going to use him, and his management and his promotion as a stepping stone for me. Yeah. You know, I ain't got nothing to lose. I'm you're gonna, to you're gonna, home. you're gonna turn me into a T-bone, aren't you? You're gonna turn me into a T-bone steak. Yeah, yeah, we'll get a T-bone, man. We'll get a T-bone. T-bone. Oh. That's my favorite steak, by the way. T-bone. We'll steak. get one. You can have a steak pie. Yeah. You can have a T-bone. It's up to you. Whatever you want. Yeah, T-bone. That's the best one. We'll that's get that. I'll one. get you a nice T-bone. That'd be nice. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah, <laughs> Chris. Listening to some of the comments that you made earlier then, are you saying that against Manuel Char that basically you, you padded that fight and that was all for a dramatisation act to, to get this fight next time out? No, 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 no. It wasn't dramatised. No, no, it was, I'm saying me staging that my whole my whole career to give me a one shot. The fight with Manuel Char, I mean, I just had to take that fight. I wasn't prepared. I didn't do a camp. You know, dealing with everything I'd have been through over the last eight months. I wasn't in a position where I just needed to make the money. I need to get back in the ring, win, lose, or draw. I won. I came out on top. No matter what the outcome of, of the judges were or whatever happened, uh, you know. Like I say, shout out Mayo Char. He gave me opportunity to change my life. You know, he won by knockout. I can't take nothing away from him. But as far as me concerned, I wasn't prepared for the fight. I wasn't nowhere near prepared for the fight. I weighed in 306 pounds, no camp, no nothing, no trainer. Came over by myself, you know. Uh, you know, and like I say, he got he, he come with a couple of shots. You know what I'm saying? I hurt my shoulder. But I'm not here to make excuses. He won the fight. And uh, I'm moving forward. So, uh, like I said, when I say I set this whole thing up, I set this whole thing up, meaning that I scheduled my whole, all my 19 wins. So people can go look at my opponent and say, oh, he hasn't fight anybody. Maybe he can't fight. And I put a bad performance on my last fight, so you got people saying, well, shit, let's get him over here. He, he probably really can't fight. And that's what I wanted to do. Because if they knew I was going to come over there and beat up Johnny Fisher, they wouldn't even call me. You know? They, they, they're not going to call me. But they think they got an easy win. That's just what it is. If I had a fighter and I'm promoting them and I'm managing them, and I wanted to get to the top. I'm not going to put him in there so I'm going to kill him on his third fight. There's no they such think thing. they got an easy win. There's no and such thing as an easy win. There's no such thing. That's what that, that's what they think. That's what I don't think. think. All that matters is what I think, and I don't think I've got an easy well, you win. Might know, you might know the truth, and that's what's going to hurt you. Your all, I know is, is be all, all I know is my right and my left hands are like hammers, and when you feel them, they're going to they're gonna feel strong. But I know you can punch yeah, we as well. See. You've got 19 knockouts on your, on your record, so I've got to be careful as well. I've got big respect for you, Chris, but listen. When it gets to that yeah. down to it, we're gonna to have to both go for it and go to war. So that's the that's the bottom line. We're going to war, boy. You better be ready. I'm ready. You better be ready. I'm ready. I'm ready every day. This ain't this, this ain't no game. This ain't glass people you fought. They, I'm not gonna just stand there standing there just hold my hands over my face. I'm coming to knock something out, bro. So good. uh good. Y'all better get together. It's, it's, I like it's, someone it's who comes with. forward. That's good. That's good. It'll be entertaining. <laughs> So, Chris, if you're saying, you know, you, you think this fight, you're going to be able to go in there and you think you're going to be able to do a number on Johnny, how long do you think potentially Johnny's going to stand in there? And from your words personally, you think it will last with you? I really don't predict rounds. I mean, I'm a come forward type of fighter. I don't back up. I don't dance around. I, 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 I'll make him fight. And he's he, he going to sit there and brawl it out or he's going to run. That's all we do. If he runs, he's going to lose the fight. You can't fight backing up. And if he's in a losing situation, and if he brawl with me, that's the worst thing he can do. That's the worst thing he can do is brawl with me. So, uh, it's like I said, it's easy, easy work for me. You know, I'm taking this fight no, hands down, no hesitation, no negotiation. I'm coming over before we even sign a contract. 
Johnny, you, you seem very calm and composed there and, and taking on, on board, I suppose, a lot of what Christopher's saying to you right now. What realistically do you make of this? And I think when I said and used the word hype earlier, that, that there's a lot that's going around on social media that of people that say that Chris can't box. Actually, he threw his last fight. What do you make of all that? Or do you not listen to the noise? Listen, there's, there's always going to be noise. The heavyweights, it's an exciting game. and Whatever you think of Christopher Lovejoy... He's had 19 knockouts on his record, so you've got to take him seriously. It doesn't matter who he's beat. To beat the heavyweights in that fashion and knock him out and stop him, he's got to have something there. So it's still a serious fight, and I'm very aware of that. And Mark Tibbs knows that well. And as Christopher said, I can't back off. I can't brawl. I've got a box, and I'm a great boxer. And that's what me and Mark are going to show. I haven't, I've just shown my raw aggression, really, in my last two fights. But now I've got to start refining my skills and, and showing it. And Chris will be a great step and a great challenge. Christopher, with the potential of you saying then that you're coming over to the UK, have you got a team that's going to come with you or is that something you're looking to implement whilst you're in the UK? I got a coach coming with me, Henry Chilman, uh, gold medalist, uh, heavyweight. Uh, he's training me right now and he's coming with me. You know, that's going to be my coach. I figure out a cut man and everything else uh, when I get ready to leave. But that's my coach and that's what I'm bringing. Okay, so, so you've got a team actually that's coming over with you because I think there was, a, again, a lot of talk and a lot of conversation last time that you went, when you went out to Germany, actually you didn't go out there with anybody. Is that true or is that incorrect? I, I, I did go by myself. <clears throat> uh, the two people who were going to come after me, they didn't make it. So they had backup cut men and trainers there who spoke English. I was a select from. So, uh, yeah, my, my team didn't make it. Uh, I came by myself at first. At first, there was a lot of hype behind it. I'm coming by myself because I obviously had to be there a while before my team got there just for the isolation thing, whatever they were doing. And uh, they were going to come late, but they didn't even make it. So, I mean, I wasn't backing out the fight. Uh, it is what it is. You know, they can't fight for me. Uh, you know, I had to do what I had to do. I, I actually saved more money by not paying out, you know, for the training to come out. So at the moment, as well, with coming over to the UK, if you can't get that finance initially, is this something that you're going to have to pay out your own pocket? Can't get what finance? So in terms of a fight that's coming up, if you're not able to get that fight initially prior to coming over to the UK, is this something you're going to have to pay for yourself? No, 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 no. Everything is going to be paid for. That's just how I go. I'm just saying I'm coming out there before the fight is even okay. finalised. I'm coming out there anyway and pay out of my own pocket. And then we finalise. You know, they can just put that extra money back on my purse for my flight because I'll already be there. Whatever happens, if we don't if we don't get the fight, it said we're still going out for some food. You can have a T-bone steak and we can have a... Oh, for sure. For sure. I'm for coming sure. out. Listen, we'll, I'm coming out there. We'll go and party. You know we'll go and party in, uh, in Essex. We'll show him around Essex. We'll take him to Sheesh. <laughs> Let's do it. How far is that from London? Not far at all, mate. Well, listen, we'll show you around. You're a good man. We'll take you out and we'll show right. you. We'll, yeah, we'll yeah, treat yeah, you as yeah, a good guest. It. You're a guest in England, so we'll treat you. we'll treat you well. Man, though, man, though, like I said, I'm coming out there regardless. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, hopefully, this fight be finalized, you know what I'm saying, by the end of this month. And uh, I'll already be out there training, adjust the time and all that stuff and the food and everything. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm going to go hit some gyms, you know. I'm going to get some work in with them heavyweights. They've been doing that. Them, them, yeah, yeah, the talking they've been doing. So, uh, let's move on. Predictions at the end of the fight, it, potentially, again, if this does take place, whose hand's going to be raised and what's the method of victory? Knockout. Knockout. Johnny? Listen, I only know one way and that's to come forward and we, 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 we work to make it. You asked him a question and he didn't ask you. Do you want me he to answer? Already. Are you going to let me answer? Already. Excuse me? Let me finish. There's only one way I really know and that's to be aggressive and come forward. That's why I'm the wrong for ball. But listen, I've got great boxing skills as well. And it might take one, two, three, four rounds. It might take six, seven rounds. It might take eight rounds. But whatever's going to happen, I'm going to give it my best. And that victory will be mine. I ain't going to get a kid. <laughs> <laughs> you guys make me laugh. It's just I do like you, bitch. You're, you're a funny guy. <laughs> but you know, hey, listen, man. Uh, no, no matter what happens, you fought an eight-time WA rank fighter, a world title challenger. You know what I'm saying? A guy came in and you stepped it up. So no matter what happens, you're a hero in my eyes. You know what I'm saying? And maybe I'll, I'll bring you in my camp for my next fight. Maybe. But listen, <laughs> forget all that. I've got big respect for you anyway. Whatever you're going to say, I don't care what you're going to say because any man who gets in the ring deserves some respect. So Christopher right. Lovejoy deserves all the respect in the world. Whatever he says, whatever he does, he's doing he's doing a good thing. He's getting the hype up. He, he does his thing and big respect to him. But when it gets to that ring, when it gets to that fight, 
is on. Well, get it. What do you make, Johnny, I suppose, of some of his comments? You know, he's saying he's old enough to be your dad. It's this element, you know, that there's a boy-man element that seems to be coming across here. Well, what do you make of that? Is it all fun and games or is this anything that you take to heart? No, it's all fun and games. I've done a lot of a lot of learning with Joe Joyce, who's been my mentor, really, and he's, he's 35, 36 now. And I've, I've sparred men from a very young age. And I know it's different fighting them. And I've, my last two fights have been against 35, 36-year-olds. So... It's nothing, nothing new to me, and it's all, it's all fun and games. And listen, it's all fun and games from his side. But we get down to business when it comes to thirty first of July. Yeah, let me just say something. George George don't really want no smoke, so he ain't the one to bring George. up. You know, he don't, he don't really want no smoke. You know, he know me very well. You know, I've been yeah. calling him out for three years. You know, he done turned it down multiple times. Yeah, he don't I really think, want yeah. no smoke at all. He doesn't know. No, yeah, I, I think I think Joe Joyce is going on to a bit bigger things than me and you at the minute. Chris, I suppose there's an element of the, you know, realistically, the boxing world is still waiting to be seen what's coming next. Obviously, there's been so many stories, there's been so many press reports, we've seen loss, but actually all everybody has seen so far is that last fight against Manuel Char. Do you think that everybody's expecting you to come in and fall at the immediate first hurdle? And is there an element that you want to prove to people you're something different? I mean, it's the element of surprise. Uh, they can think what they want to think. Uh, I want them to think that because that's going to be more money. I, I hope he's the favorite because let, let me tell you what happened. I bet 10000 on myself against Manuel Char. I lost. I was trying to come home with a quarter million. So if he's the favorite, I'm going to bet the house on myself. You know what I'm saying? So uh, that's just, like I said, they can think what they want to think. It don't even matter no more. You know, they ain't got no film. They don't know what I'm looking like. They don't know what I'm doing in the gym. They don't know nothing. So. <clears throat> that's on them alright gents well I think before we sit here and we go backwards and forwards all, all night let's have a last bit of a conversation before we decide to call it again that night Christopher last words from you uh, thanks for having me uh, hopefully this thing go through uh, for my little fans I do got just be patient with me I'm knocking this boy out cold and for my haters come say what y'all want to say I love y'all. I got more haters than supporters. So, you know, <laughs> I'm going to see y'all soon. We're going to cook the bull and make a T-bone. T-bone. You're going to make me... You get a lot of T-bones out of me. You can get about 30 yeah, or 40 T-bones out of it. Let's you get it. Johnny, Johnny, last words on a level, mate. Yeah, listen. Christopher Lovejoy. What a character. What a man. And listen, it's a great it's a great fight for my third fight. It's gonna, I'm taking it very seriously. I'm in camp. I've been training hard. I've been sparring hard. And I've got no better team around me than Sam Jones, Mark Tibbs, Eddie Hearn. So it's a good test for my third fight. A lot of respect to uh, Christopher Lovejoy. But when it comes down to it, 31st of July or early August, we're ready to go. I just hope Chris gets on that plane and we can make it happen. Oh, I'll be there. That's one thing I'm pulling up for sure. We ain't He's got coming to worry about that. coming to you Essex. Just make sure you out. don't get COVID. Don't catch no, no little BS. Don't get no injuries or stomachache. No. And none of that. Because I'm going to be there. We'll go, out to Rock we'll go out in Romford afterwards as well. We'll go to the Goose in Romford. We'll have a good night. What? It's called the Goose <laughs> Pub in Romford. Do you want to fancy a glass of glass of Guinness or something? A pint of Guinness. We'll get you. Oh, we'll take it out. We'll take it out. Good man. Good right, man. gents. I'm going to bring this to a cease here. Definitely fans, uh, you know, there, there was a lot of people that were interested actually when we said we were doing this tonight. Quite a few people, as you can see, I think at the height of it, there was nearly 300 that tuned in. So uh, I'm extremely grateful for everybody that's given us their time this evening and you two guys, obviously. Um, Fantastic to sit here and be a part of it. And definitely it's a fight that I'd look forward uh, as a fan myself to see. So thank you ever so much, gents. Thanks very much. Let's, see you let's soon. Get it, bro. Tap in. See y'all soon. See you soon, mate. See you in the rabbits. Bye. Let's, let's get it. See you later, guys.